The modern banjo has its roots in the musical traditions of Africa. It was played by the slaves in colonial America. During the late 19th and 20th centuries, it was one of the most popular stringed instruments in the country and was utilized in folk and bluegrass music. Later, musicians such as John Hartford began to play the banjo in exciting and untraditional ways. It's knowing that your door is always open and your path is free to walk And makes me tend to leave my sleeping bag rolled up and stashed behind your couch The popularity of the banjo began to decline during the mid-20th century. What had been a nationally beloved instrument, used by African Americans and whites, and everything from jazz to big band music, became to be viewed as taboo and was associated with the hillbillies of the southern United States. Despite the stereotypes and lack of recognition in popular culture, the banjo and the people who played them continued to evolve. One such player is Bella Fleck, who has won 12 Grammys for his work on the banjo. I think the banjo is a really underappreciated instrument in music, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I like it. <laughs> it's been good to you. No, I mean, there's a lot of people that really like it, but but generally speaking, yeah, it's been it's been pigeonholed. A lot of people just think of it as an instrument for bluegrass or old time music, and um, there's a lot of other things you can do with it. And historically, there's been a lot of things done with it. For instance, it's a, an early uh, important part of early jazz. You know, Louis Armstrong, Cab Calloway, Jelly Roll Morton all had banjos in their bands. Um, and it kind of faded out of that music, and then it, it became really strong in folk and bluegrass. But um, it has a history, also going back to the slaves and going back to Africa. And even in the late 1800s, it was sort of the most popular instrument in the United States, um, kind of like guitar is now. You know, everybody had a banjo at their house, and they played all kinds of music on it, pop music of the day, uh, light classical music, and, uh, and uh, minstrel music, and music that came from the slaves. The past 20 years have seen a revival of the banjo in American culture due to the rising popularity of bluegrass music and its use in non-traditional genres. Actor, comedian, and banjo enthusiast Steve Martin, seen here performing with banjo legend Earl Scruggs, has done his part in exposing new generations of Americans to the banjo. I think is fantastic. Uh, Steve Martin, a prize for excellence in banjo and bluegrass. Explain the origin of that and what it means. Well, since I've been playing professionally again right. in the last uh, couple of years, I, I, 
I was introduced to many, many banjo players and bluegrass musicians and uh, people who play the instruments of bluegrass, and I noticed that the level of musicianship uh, has risen so high. Uh, I wasn't aware of it, and, and I uh, discussed it with my wife one night. I said, these players are so fantastic, and I thought they should get some recognition. The perception of the banjo and traditional banjo music has improved in America in recent years. Part of this evolution is due to its use in non-traditional genres by artists such as Neil Young, Modest Mouse, The Black Keys, Fish, The Avid Brothers, and many more. As long as more people open themselves up to new types of music, and the amazing musicians who have dedicated themselves to the instrument continue to push boundaries and break barriers, the banjo will find itself a permanent place in American music culture. It's too small to smoke and it's too big to eat. Yes.